Bali is a tropical place. Sometimes in my garden I see hummingbirds. In the ocean I usually see crabs, sea urchins, oysters, bright orange, purple, blue fish. The thing that I like most about living in Bali is it's more free. <laughs> The downside of Bali is there's loads of plastic everywhere you go. Even where you think there's no plastic, there will be at least one plus. This is all the plastic here, right in front of the Hard Rock Cafe in Kuta. So the situation about plastic in this island, in general, you can see it clearly on the road. There are many illegal dumpings, burning, littering, and there are so many plastics everywhere. The warung, the supermarket. So like every, everywhere in the planet, we are in a danger of plastic pollution. My name is Joseph Wijaya. I live with my mom, dad, little sister, little brother. My dad is from Java and my mom's from England. It was a long time ago I was playing with my friends when it was COVID. I saw they were collecting recycling to sell and some of the money they would give to their mom and dad. I would help them and then after a while I thought it's kind of not fair that they have to collect to survive. started to think I have a mum and dad that can support me to make a recycling business that can help loads of kids. So we started on 2022, I was still 10. Jersey Recycling has a weekly pickup service. I have almost a hundred clients. His mission is to shut down single-use plastic factories and to clean up the rest of the plastic in the world. Today we're doing the pickups. We have 30 pickups. What's the weather like today? Rainy. Yeah. Does that stop you? No. So we just finished the pickup and now we're gonna sort the stuff. So each bag bag has different plastics. This one's HDPE. There's some plastics that you can reuse and some you can't. The HDPE I can make into keyring, soon maybe furniture, and then money from that is to go to pay for kids to go to school. So we were seeing how to make something so we could get more money out of it so we can pay for more kids to go to school. So first we collect the bottle top from the pickups, then we clean the bottle tops, and then the HDPE we shred. HDPE is a um, high polymer plastic, and it's also the least toxic to melt. And then put them back in the panini press, and put cookie cutters on top. And close again, wait a few minutes, then let it cool for one or two hours. Lock that, drill the holes. And then put the key bits on. I sell my key rings at Sunday markets and eco festivals.
this Saturday I'm gonna do a speech. I'm feeling quite good about it. Not nervous? A little bit. Today I'm here because it's a children festival and then they invited me. I'm hoping to get more people to join my recycling project. So I come say for more kids to go to school and more kids are recycling. Are you, are you excited to speak on stage? Bit nervous. <laughs> Do you want to say I'm Joseph from Joseph Recycling and I'm the owner of Joseph Recycling. And I want to tell you how I started and about my project. The speech went well. Yeah. And there was barely anyone looking. Something that I can't force people to do is to have more audience. The situation of plastic in Bali is still the same as a long time ago. The government has told some shops to not use plastic bags, but local places like the local Warum has like used plastic bags. Other countries, like England, stuff like that, they say they're recycling it, but they're just sending it to Java. I think it should be everyone's job, young or old, to clean up Bali. Needs more local to clean up too. The problem with beach cleanups after the plastic has been in the ocean more than three days, it's not recyclable anymore. We should do more street cleanups or river cleanups before it go goes into the sea. Even though I know that the plastic can't be recycled, so I can spread awareness to people. I set up Joseph Recycling because everywhere I went, when I went fishing, I went surfing, there's plastic everywhere. I decided to pay for kids to go to school because I felt bad because they had money issues or they had an issue for birth certificate. Because if you don't have that, you can't go to school. Same with the money. Tried to think how to make those two problems into one so we can have a cleaner and better Bali. For this year, my goal is to pay for 20 kids to go to school. So to pay for a kid is 4 million for a whole year. Today we're going to pick melons and then go to the school of the orphanage so we can pay for more kids to go to school. These are small ones? Don't know. That came off really good. That one looks like a butt. <laughs> Long time ago, we used to go every month, or every two or three months before I started this to buy food for them. How many kids have you sent through school so far? I have sent 24 kids now. How many more do you want to help? Um, every kid that can't go to school in Bali. It's wonderful to see Joseph's, because at the beginning it's like a very small scale project, a few houses, but I've been seeing Joseph more recently 
in the public arena and really creating a huge advocacy and communication building awareness. He can be a good motivation, inspiration to other children, and also it can be also inspiration to the adults and the government, hopefully, and the corporation, hopefully, to make a aligned mission so we can solve this plastic pollution from the source. What I see in the future for myself is be successful in life. It's like I have a house, I have a family, my business is still going. The advice that I would say to someone that is trying to do what I'm doing is just to start from zero, learn bit by bit how to do it, and also try and have fun what you do. If someone said I should give up, I should say to them, why should I give up when when you don't do anything to help the world. If we shut down some of these plastic companies and clean up Bali, there'll be a better chance of having less plastic here. I am hopeful that there's going to be a positive change. Nama aku Joseph, aku 10 tahun, dan aku mau ganti situasi untuk alam lebih baik.